Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video. And in this video, the time has finally come. The second embargo has been lifted and I am now officially allowed to talk about the Prison of Elders and show you the footage I recorded at Bungie a couple of weeks back. So let's get straight into it by answering the question everybody has been asking since it was first announced. What is the Prison of Elders? The Prison of Elders is a new 3v3 co-op arena activity where you face off against waves of increasingly difficult enemies to earn high level end game legendary and exotic rewards. However, when I say waves of increasingly difficult enemies, you'd be forgiven for thinking it sounds like a conventional horde mode, but it's not. It is so much better, and honestly I had an absolute blast playing this. See, the way it works is as follows. You drop into the prison after seeing this really awesome intro sequence which looks like something out of an Avengers movie, and you then find yourself in this small chamber, with four doors, north, east, south and west, and a hatch beneath you. Each of these doors leads to a room, and within each room lies your challenge. There's a room for Hive, Fallen, Vex and Cabal, and the room you are presented with and the order in which you do them appears to be random. When I was at Bungie, the team I played with, which was More Console and My Name is Bife, had two Cabal rooms, two Hive rooms and one Fallen, whilst another team didn't experience the Fallen room but instead got a Vex room, so already you can see where some of the variety and replayability is going to come in. Now in order to complete the prison, you have to complete five rounds. The first three rounds aren't too bad. Before entering a room, you are presented with a modifier, and this modifier remains for the duration of that room. These modifiers can be anything from the likes of Juggler or Solar Burn, etc., or they can even be new, never before seen modifiers like this one, Catapult, where your grenade recharge rate is greatly increased, meaning you've got grenades for days. Either way, once you have been presented with your modifier, you enter the room and begin battling waves of incoming enemies. The first three rounds present you with three waves of enemies. However, to make things a little bit more difficult, there is also a mechanic known as a critical objective, which are objectives you must complete in addition to battling the waves of enemies, and if you fail to complete them, your entire team will wipe, and you'll need to do that room again. Mines must be dismantled, or dead. So for example, in this scenario, we had to deactivate some mines, which involved standing in a control-like circle for a period of time while the mine is deactivated. You do this three times, and then you've completed the critical objective. But bear in mind, all whilst you're doing that, you have to fend off enemies. Also, upon completing a critical objective, Varrox will occasionally present you with a gift, which is effectively a supply drop of sorts. Sometimes it will be a Scorch Cannon, so you can unleash havoc on the enemies with a kick-ass Megaton rocket launcher, or other times it's simply a crate of infinite heavy ammo. So besides keeping yourself alive, there are other benefits to completing these objectives as well. The last two rounds will have you facing off against bosses in these rooms whilst also fending off waves of incoming enemies. During my time playing this, I only experienced a Hive boss and the final boss, which was a Cabal enemy who has a constantly changing elemental shield that causes you to keep switching your weapons in order to deal with it. I would imagine, however, either at higher difficulties or simply at random, that you may also face off against a Fallen or a Vex boss at times. If you successfully complete all five rounds, you are awarded a treasure key. And with this in hand, you return to the central chamber and the door or hatch that was beneath your feet opens up. And this, my friends, leads to the treasure room. Unfortunately, I'm not actually allowed to show you the treasure room. So, seeing this door open is as far as you go, I'm afraid. But that just means it gives you something to look forward to on launch day. Just know that upon completing the Prison of Elders, you can obtain random rewards, which include legendary and exotic weapons, and the cool class items as well. However, on top of that, you will also receive as a guaranteed drop, based on the difficulty you played, an armor or weapon core. See, the Prison of Elders comes in four difficulties, as you can see in the director on the Reef map. Level 28, level 32, 34, and 35. If you look at the rewards, you'll see that the level 28 one will provide you with experience for the House of Judgment, a Cryptarch Engram, and some Vanguard Marks and Rewards. Level 32, however, will reward you with more House of Judgment reputation and a guaranteed Armor Core drop, which I'll speak about in a second, but for now, just know that that is your key to guaranteed armor drops on a weekly basis. Level 34 will reward you with yet more reputation and a guaranteed weapon core, as well as a chance to get some etheric light, which is used to ascend legendary gear and bring it up to the new light level cap of 34. And lastly, the level 35 arena will result in even more reputation, an armor core, weapon core, and a chance at more etheric light. 
Now as mentioned, these armour and weapon cores are your key to guaranteed weekly loot. No doubt you know by now how frustrating it can be on a weekly basis when you go through a raid only to find that you get to the end, you defeat the boss and you've got nothing but shards or energy. Well now, while the Prison of Elders does still contain random drops, it will also provide you with a guaranteed reward for your efforts. See when you have an armor core or a weapon core, you simply take that to Varax, who is located in the reef, and you can exchange them for a piece of armor or a weapon respectively. Or alternatively, you can exchange both an armor and a weapon core for what is known as a Judgment's Chance, which is a legendary package, akin to an engram, which, when opened, can reward you with Prisoner of Elders related items. It could be good, or it could be the same as what you've already bought, but that is RNG for you. Each week, the gear he sells will rotate, just like Brother Vance, so it may be that week 1, he has gauntlets and an auto rifle, but then week 2, he could have a chest piece and a shotgun. Who knows? But either way, if you complete the prison in that week, you can, without a doubt, obtain that piece of gear, so you will always get something for your efforts. Which is a great move, and something I'm really glad that Bungie implemented. As mentioned, the prison does also have random drops, like this cape, the Kill Hunter's Hood, that I got at the end, and this heavy machine gun, the Wolf's Bane, plus I also got the last word. So as you can see, there is now a healthy combination of random RNG based rewards, as well as some good old fashioned guaranteed loot. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is the Prison of Elders. I'll tell you now, I genuinely had so much fun playing this. The great thing about the Prison of Elders is that it has a load of small contained raid like moments where you're on the edge of your seat, but it's also just so much fun that the second you finish it, you actually want to jump straight back in and play it all over again. So I for one am glad that Bungie put this in the House of Wolves instead of a raid. Don't get me wrong, I still love raids and when they release the next one I'll be super hyped. But good game to Bungie for trying something new and it worked. And with that, my work here is done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Prisoner of Elders from what you've seen. And thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.